Let's look at the mechanisms or mechanism of enzyme action. We want to look at two things, structural considerations. These are the shape of the enzyme, and remember that that can change, and the affinities of enzymes for substrates. We also will look at energy considerations, and we'll talk about free energy and activation energy. So here's a picture of an enzyme and a substrate, the little red structure at the upper left. The specificity between the two of these things, the affinity, the attractive power between the two, brings the substrate, which in this case is glucose, close to the active site of the enzyme, and the enzyme in this case is hexokinase. There you have the ASE suffix right at the end of the name. A hexokinase we will see in looking at glycolysis, so it's a very common enzyme, the first one of glycolysis. So a mutual affinity draws the two of them together, and then the substrate penetrates the active site, achieves a better fit of substrate to enzyme, and that's called induced fit. This phenomenon has been actually identified and seen by X-ray crystallography in which you can look at the shape of the enzyme in the presence or in the absence of substrate and see that their shapes are actually different. The place where the substrate bound is called the active site of the enzyme. The induced fit mechanism predicts intermediates in the interaction of substrate with enzyme to form product. So we have it drawn here as enzyme plus substrate being drawn to one another. When they are in fact bound to one another, we could say that there is an intermediate we can call ES star. This is an initial intermediate. Then comes induction of fit, where the substrate somehow fits even more perfectly into the active side of the enzyme and that complex is then called the enzyme substrate complex. In this form, bonds in the substrate or substrates are being strained and stressed in preparation for rearranging them to do the chemical reaction. Finally, we have an enzyme and its products, and the products have lower affinity for the enzyme, and so they dissociate from the enzyme. You could postulate an EP complex. We believe the EP complex for most enzymes is very short-lived, in fact, because of the very low affinity of products for the enzyme, and so that we don't assume it, it lasts very long. But for reasons I can show you later, we do assume that the enzyme substrate complex has a finite lifetime, albeit very short, it's still finite, and needs to be considered in understanding how an enzyme works. So it says, understanding the interactions of substrate, or substrates, if there's more than one, and an enzyme, are essential to understanding enzyme kinetics.